Hello and welcome to the playlist on SAP and Power Platform here on the SAP on Azure YouTube channel. In the last video, we showed how to read hundreds of sales orders from the SAP system, filter them, and make a subset of values available in a Power App. This time, we want to write data to the SAP system. For this, we'll create a simple app that asks for the first and last name of a business partner and create it in the SAP system. We will again use an RFC for this, not a transaction via Power Automate Desktop or an OData service. Unlike the previous example where the sales order RFC returned a long JSON structure, this time we will only get the created business partner ID back from the SAP system. This means we don't need the resource action to parse the JSON array, but we can use the simple Power App Return feature to easily pass a string back from Power Automate to Power App. And we'll do something on top. The Power Platform comes with so many cool features, like the AI integration to convert examples to actual formulas, which we used to convert a date in our previous example. We now want to use the barcode scanner to simplify data entry. We'll use that to scan a QR code of a V card, extract the first and last name from there, and use this to create the business partner in the SAP system. So let's take a look. So we'll start with the SAP GUI. And if I go to transaction BP, I can actually quickly create a new business partner here directly from the user interface. So I can just um, type here username and password. And you can see um, if I click on save, I get this new business partner um, created. Now, obviously, we don't want to use this via the transaction, but we want to do this um, from a function module. So again, we'll go to SE37. Um, and there we can actually see there's a BAPI BUPA business partner create from data, which we can execute. And you can see there, there's lots and lots of parameters that you potentially can fill out. Luckily, we don't need to fill out all these parameters. So what we need is this um, partner category, and then under central data person. And that's where we also need to provide here some additional um, information. Let's just hear from SE37, for example. And with this, I can actually create the business partner. You can see I already got a business partner ID. What I've not done yet is commit this transaction. So that's why we would actually not see this business partner in the database um, in the SAP system. But that's what we need in our Power Platform. So with this, let's switch over to our Power Platform and start very much like before with a simple app. We'll call it Add Business Partner. And we can quickly get started. We saw we need two input fields. So one for the first name and one for the last name. We'll also change the labels here to make it a little more easier to relate to this. So instead of text input one, we'll call this text input first name and text input um, last name. That's almost it. We just need one more button to actually obviously call our Power Automate flow again, and then we're all set. So. Let's connect this button to a Power Automate flow. We don't have the Power Automate flow yet. So very much like before, we just create a new flow. And we'll create from blank. We'll change the name to create BP. And now very much like before, we can just add a new step. We want to call our SAP system using the ERP connector via this call SAP function V2. We add the SAP connection details, and then we search for our um, BAPI BUPA create from SAP. And we can see here the pet, uh, partner category, which will just hard code to one. But then there are also additional parameters that we can select from. And we learned um, it's here this central data person first name and central data person last name. These are the two fields that we want to expose. Obviously, we could add much, much more. But in our simple scenario, we'll just select these two. And for both of these parameters, 
we want to ask um, the Power App to provide us with dynamic variables. So what we'll do is here, for the first name, we'll select Ask in Power Apps. And very much for the second, for the last name, we'll do the same thing. We'll also ask in Power App. That's actually all there is. With this, we can create the business partner in the SAP system. Um, but as we saw when executing the um, function module directly in SE37, what we also need is we need to commit this transaction. So what we'll do is, is um, we'll just select here auto commit to yes, which really means that uh, the business partner is not only created, but it's also um, committed to the SAP system. With that, there's only one step left. We obviously want to maybe um, show the business partner ID that was created in the SAP system back in the Power App. And so what we'll do is um, not like what we did the last time where we used the response functionality. This time we want to use another way to return data back to the Power App. And that's the respond to a Power App or flow. So with this one, um, the, the capabilities are much more restricted, but in our case, that's perfect. So what we want is we just want to expose um, a text back and we want to return the business partner ID. And actually you can see here, that's the first return value that I get, the business partner number. And we'll just give it a name. We'll call it business partner ID. That's it. Now we can save it. I mean, we could run a test, but in our case, I think we're all good. So let's switch back to the um, Power App and just map this button to our Power App. So when the button is collect, um, um, selected, so on this select, we'll call the create BP run. We'll pass over the first name. So remember, we had this as the text input first name, text, and text input last name, dot text. Now, this would execute the um, Power Automate flow. But what we also want, we get something in return. So what we'll do is we'll map the result. So the business partner number will map this to this variable BPNR and have this as a as a text that we can now also showcase um, in the app. So for this, what we'll do is we'll add one more field, we'll add a text label. And we'll assign the value of this text label to our business partner number. And that's it. So with this, we can actually already test our flow. So if I enter here my first name and my last name, and I'll just call it from Power App, if I click this button, I get here this business partner ID. So let's just copy this one. Let's switch back to our SAP system open transaction BP and search for this new business partner 59 or 15. And you can see here, this is now the business partner that has been created from Power Apps in the SAP system. Now, since this was so easy, let's do a little more enhancements. And let's say um, sometimes you get a QR code um, with all the business information in there. So what we'll do is we will quickly add a barcode reader that allows us to scan a QR code that contains all the relevant um, business information. Obviously, in our case, we'll just extract the user, the first name and the last name, but that's the, the basis to create the business partner in the SAP system. So once this barcode um, button is, is selected, so on this on scan event, what we want to do is we want to capture vCard basically. So what we'll do is We'll set the results, my V card from our barcode reader one. We'll retrieve the barcodes. And actually, the thing is, these barcodes contain or can contain a, a full list of um, barcodes. So we'll just look for the first result that we get in here and take the value from there. This is something that we'll set in this V card. And actually, to test this out, I've created here. Um, a, a small barcode that contains here my first name, my last name and stuff like that. And the result looks something like this. So um, you have here this V card, you have the name, you have, um, yeah, well, actually, you have here 
the full name would be Holger, obviously, and Bruchelt. And then you have some, some additional information. That's what we'll get, get when we extract this, um, this QR code. So now I have all this information, all this, um, this information here from, from this V card um, in my variable, my V card here. So now what I need to do is I need to split this up, this, this content, because I only want to extract the first name and the last name. Now, this can be a little complicated, but actually what I did, I just used ChatGPT to help me split the content. So basically, I'm, for example, looking here for the for the version. Um, actually, I need to change this here to my um, V card. So I'll look for version 3.0. I look for this FN first name, and then I'll put all this in the um, content from V card. With this, I can then split this information and make it available here in my first name in this variable, my first name. So basically, I'll just um, split for for the semicolon. And I'll do the same thing for um, the last name. So now when I scan this QR code, I get the first name and the last name in these two variables. Now what I want to do is actually, I want to make them available here in these two fields so that I can potentially also um, change them. So in order to do this, I will just select here um, the screen one. And um, when this is shown for the first time, so on visible, what I'll do is I'll create two additional new variables. So I'll call them um, input last name and input first name. And I'll just provide them here with a, with a placeholder. And then when these two variables are created, I want to map them here to the input field. So I'll call this input first name. And this one is the variable input last name. And now what I'll do is if the um, barcode reader is, is, is selected, I want to update these two properties here directly with this information, my first name and my last name. So basically, I will update the context for our input last name with my last name and input first name with my first name. So with this small addition, I have now a barcode reader in my app that allows me to scan a QR code that populates then the, these two um, fields in here. And then if I click on the button, the um, business partner would be created in the SAP system. So let's take a look. Actually, let me um, save this one. And if I now open up this um, power app in my on my mobile device, I can see here the add business partner app, and I can see all this information here. And now if I switch over here to this QR code, if I click on barcode reader, then I can see here immediately um, the barcode. So I can just click on OK. Now you can see that the first name and last name has been entered, I can actually go in here and um, enter some additional information. And if I click on button, which actually creates the business partner in the SAP system, I get here um, this business partner ID. And if I switch over here to our SAP system, and if I take a look at the business partner 160, you can see that the business partner has been created in the SAP system. I hope this video showed you how easy it is to not only read information from the SAP system, but also update and create data directly from a Power App using Power Automate in the SAP system. On top, I think it's just amazing to see all the little features that really make up this power of the Power Platform. Like in our case, the barcode scanner that allowed us to quickly scan a QR code and leverage results in the context of SAP. Thank you very much for watching.